Hello. There was a big old delay with that working, uh, just in time for a cat to run in like a loon. Hi. What's going on? I don't know. That was uh, very, very dramatic. Oh. What <laughs> on earth is going on here? He looks like just he's been terrified by something. Jumped on top of a wardrobe. I've never seen him make his way up there before. Uh, sorry, that's not a very professional start of the blog, is it? I his mean, tail's not fluffed up. I think he's okay. I think he's just being mental. That so was yeah, Totem super just dramatic. ran in uh, speedy, speedy as you like. Under and he's now feet, on then... top of a wardrobe, but he yeah. looks fine. Um, <laughs> so sorry about that, guys. That's very dramatic. Um, what what hi. is up with you? <laughs> Uh, just, I don't know, zoomies. Uh, so hi guys, it is, uh, apologies, yesterday I messed it up. I actually said it was day 87, it wasn't, it was day 89, which makes today day 90 of our lockdown blog. Um, so I think for day 100, we are kind of decided that we will live stream, which we've never done before. Oh. So um, I don't really know what time of day we should do that either. You've got a chat show thing that you're filming at about four that afternoon. So mm. that's not doable. But I think evening is probably better, but maybe earlier than we normally do them. So what so... would we do, though? Because would we then live stream it? Because normally they end up going out the day after we yeah or we'll just live them. stream so it and just... people just have to either watch it live or it'll go out the next they can watch it the next day from they can watch it whenever so do... they like no we won't do another one we'll just day 100 will be live and then but it'll still yeah okay. it'll, st it'll stay up because once you live stream it's then up when you finish the, recording the logistics so it'll of just... this are very simple I don't but know. i've not had to use my brain for thinking much <laughs> in the last few months um so yeah i'm guessing we'll do that in the evening uh and I don't know, potentially, uh, that then at least we'll know how that works. But I've never done a live stream before, and there's just a button, either upload a video or go live. So once wow. we go live, we're live. And I don't know if people can comment, and if they do, if we can see them. Uh, we bought some Prosecco uh, on Monday after the old uh, uh, proposal uh, and didn't drink it. No. So, uh, so we we've, <laughs> we've got it now. Two years of doing it on the vlog. Is this... We seem to get we're sickening now, like people that was quite sweet the proposal, but now like come on, we it's days it? later now. Oh it's, screw it's, that. Like uh, getting married, mate. I just think I look probably seem quite smug for for a man who's put on so much weight in such a short amount of time. But uh Ah, oh, I just could have done with a bit more of the thing. It's still quite fun. Basically, mm. neither of us particularly like Prosecco. It's just so like the, the syrups thing. that he bought for um the, the, the Yelly Daniel and the the Relly Daniel. Uh, we've added to Prosecco, and either there's not enough in this one, or I it has settled. settled yeah. I did stir the other ones, maybe uh, maybe it needed a bit of a stir. But yeah. um, excuse the uh, Christmas glasses, but they're the only sort of flutes I've got. So. And they're bought for you by your friend Sarah, is that Yeah, right? Mappy. So thank you, Mappy, for uh, that. Yeah, lovely. Um, so, we thought, sod it, we'll, we'll have some Prosecco this evening. We did, like have drinks to celebrate but we just sort of bought the Prosecco, took it wine, over there and then just up, just did our usual cider and wine well, we were malarkey. A curry weren't we? And it, I'm not yeah. sure Prosecco really goes with a curry. I don't think anything really goes with Prosecco really. <laughs> Maybe like, like forest fruits? Um, I think it's like it's nice to have some grapes. bubbles. Grapes. What would a meal of grapes with no prosecco. i'm not saying with a you said nothing goes with it you didn't say specify a meal well but you were saying curry doesn't really go with prosecco and i'm yeah. just saying like yeah well like... all right uh tapas <laughs> okay just naming foods now yeah yeah um so yeah so that's why we've got them so yeah just we realized we hadn't done a cheese so stop naming food okay. <laughs> you're just gonna sit there and say, yeah. smoked salmon oh i don't eat that do I? well that is not what you you know, you can't change the parameters of the question. <laughs> like, what question? What is the question? Yeah, nothing goes with um, Prosecco. And I well, that was just basically fish. both not... of us agree that we don't really like Prosecco, which is why no, we've added... I like it at a wedding. Yeah, I know. Well, we... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because, um, yeah, well, actually, that leads us on. Uh, I'm quite pleased with us today. I think we've <laughs> done quite well. Now we, now we d are going to sound smug. Well, I'm quite pleased with our... Well, well I'm allowed to say this is like... We're documenting lockdown and what we've, well, we've done lots of sort of humdrum normal things today. One of the main things we've done is clear space for our fridge, which is arriving tomorrow. Mm. Fridge freezer. Um, I'm excited about that because I'm sad. But also it's uh, like lockdown life is like a, a new bit of furniture arriving is a big day. I'm less excited because we've been given a delivery window of 7am mm. to 11am, yeah. which means I need to be... 
like up and able to let people in from 7 a.m. Even though they'll probably show up at 10:45. Yeah, and, that's always uh, the way, isn't it? So um, that's going to be hellish, and it's gone midnight now. So it's actually quite close to one now. Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> That's not an accent you normally have. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Um, so I'm not. <laughs> what is that? That's new. <laughs> Funny things. Um, yeah. But so yeah, I'll let those pricks in for <laughs> our fridge freezer. Um, I tell you what though, it's been torrential weather today. Horrible weather. Yeah. It's last been... couple of days. Well, yesterday was worse than today. I thought we were going to have another big storm today because yesterday during the big storm, Lucy, our dog, uh, she's adorable, but she's a bit of a wuss, uh, to be honest. Like, um, she's sort of getting more wussy as she gets older as well, which is not the way it normally goes, but sort of gets a bit freaked out by fireworks and stuff, which is fair. Um, but like Labradors are supposed to be gun dogs. You'd think they'd be OK with like loud noises. But yeah, so yesterday the, the thunder was quite spectacular. Uh, and then that sort of sets her off kind of trembling and hyperventilating and she gets quite nervy and she just wants to be very close to you so actually while we were doing our escape rooms yesterday she was under our chairs here sort of cowering close to us so today she started sort of doing the same thing again but it was it was drizzling but it wasn't sort of stormy so I thought oh maybe she can sort of sense that the storm's coming in because they sort of say that dogs and cats can kind of pick up on stuff before we can uh, but it didn't actually come to that. It just stayed being pretty grotty all day. Um, but it turns out I think she uh, was feeling um, a bit ill. Because when I did take her out, uh, crikey, uh, there, there were visible signs to her having a little bit of an upset stomach. So I think that's what was going on there. Um, but so I think she's not feeling entirely top notch. But she seems otherwise fine. And once we got back from the walk, she seemed fine. But she, yeah, she was a bit... Been... Sorry, there's a cat being very straight. We're literally walking across the back of the. So if we're well, I try my best to keep talking and looking sort of at you, but she, she, she just sort of dozes off. Um, that's probably why I would pick up that it's glass unusual. if I were you. Please, please pick up it's that glass. That's unusual behaviour from you. Sorry, isn't it? Um, that that glass that of Chris's is right next to the actual computer thing, and Totem was looking like he was thinking about giving it a good old knock off the desk. Um, so yeah, he's being a bit odd. Uh, all of our animals are odd. That's just uh, we've is, just accepted it now. But it is. It has been miserable weather the last couple of days, and obviously a lot of lockdown. You know, you think about the things that you can't do. You can't go to the mm. pub. You can't see your friends. But the flip side of that is, like, if you're like us, you're in furlough or your your business can't open. Um, I'm furloughed. Yeah. I'm furloughed myself. Well, you. Are under no obligation to be anywhere when the weather's horrible. No. Um, so you can just set up camp. And you can't you find yourself out somewhere and going, oh, God, I've got to get home in this or anything like that. Yeah, or at so, least, like, if you are, like, out with a dog or something, you know that you're just... You can walk directly away. home and just get changed. Maybe have a hot bath. It's not like you could, like on your way to work and you're going to have to spend the day in wet clothes. Mm. Like, oh, that's one of the things that really bugs me. Like, if I get like caught in rain that I'm not expecting and it gets into your shoes, mm. so then you've got a whole day in wet like shoes. wet, cold shoes and you, you just like feel like you get trench foot. Like, that's probably very much minimising how bad trench foot actually is. But you know when like, <laughs> like you look at your feet at the end of the day and they're just like, all gross and like wrinkly like they've been in the bath too long but it's just because you've been in wet mm. wet feet all day so actually i i've got spare shoes at work for that just such a purpose my um, hair has gone very locked down yes I don't, it has. I don't know if the humidity so has mine um, but i get like look at those roots like that is not acceptable although um a, a fair, well, probably last year or so, a long while ago anyway, everybody installed Face App, which did the like various um, tests that you could do on your face. You can make yourself look old, make yourself look another gender, things like that. Um, well, they've made uh, a new generation one. So I never did the old one, uh, but some various people have been sharing, usually the gender swap ones. Mm. Like we saw um, Simon Emanuel's. Oh, he makes a fit lady. Oh. Some of them look... Um, oh, I would. Um, they look very sort of uh, 
I che- well, I checked myself out as a bloke today. I would not. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I also it seems to have changed my ethnicity, which is a bit odd because it's definitely made me quite olive skinned. Um, but yeah, uh, I do not make a fit man. I think I think maybe these cheekbones just because then when it's like masculined me up, it's just made me look really square faced and kind of like bloated. <laughs> Not not a great look. I'll show you later if you like. Um, but one of the things that what you can also do is change your hairstyle. Um, and so I was like, oh, long hair. I haven't had long hair for ages. Uh, and then I was just like, oh, yeah, long. And it automatically does it whatever colour your roots are. So it just automatically gave me long, really dark brown hair. And I was like, oh, yeah. It's been a while since I've had, like, normal person hair. And I think if I'm growing it long and if I'm having a wedding... Um, I probably, well, I don't think I want respectable coloured hair for my wedding. No. But if I want to get my hair long and healthy by my wedding, I probably need to give it a lot of TLC at this stage. Um, oh, I've never seen you with um, hair that isn't kind of no, I know it's not a bright colour. Well, I've, I haven't had hair that's uh, sort of natural coloured for, I think I cut my hair off, I cut my hair all really short when I first got a fibro diagnosis because it was a really hot summer. And I wasn't really able to sort of, well, I was I was very much housebound, but I was quite a lot of it. I was bedbound. And so I just wasn't able to like, even just like washing your hair and stuff. So I will admit my hair was a bit gross and I just wasn't able to look after myself very well. So I cut it all off really short, like pixie short. Uh, and then as I sort of felt a bit better, uh, because your hair's that short, you can do kind of whatever you like to it because it's so fresh and healthy. that I just bleached it all really blonde. And then that following... I think it's October because every October they do World Zombie Day. Mm. So I had bleach blonde hair at the time, but I went as a zombie to World Zombie Day, which is a massive zombie pub crawl in London. It raises money for St Mungo's, which is a homeless charity in London. Uh, but it's also it's just very fun because you basically the, like the first year I went there was about eleven hundred of us and we're all zombies and you we were walking up Charing Cross Road, uh, up Oxford Street, down Charing Cross Road and sort of hitting a few pubs and bars and things on the way. Uh, It's very good fun. Um, But because I had bleach blonde hair, I gave myself sort of a a head wound as I was a zombie. Uh, So I had lots of fake blood in my hair and I had it sort of all running down my face. What I didn't know would happen is the pigment in the fake blood dyed my hair pink. uh, And it did not wash off. It was just that half of my head went pink. So I was like, all right, well, actually, I quite like that. I quite like that. I had a big, weird pink chunk. But then it sort of, it snowballed from there and I just got addicted to mad hair colours. But then I've grown my hair since then and actually to get your hair really bright colours you have to bleach it. Which when it's short is fine. But actually I want it long now and yeah you can't keep doing it. You, you can have it long or bleached but unless you've got super thick amazing hair which I do not. You've got to pick one or the other. But uh, I am actually quite liking the dark, like if you can see them closer, there are greys, which we just won't talk about. But um, actually maybe like, yeah, I've been sort of blue and purple. I've been every colour, actually. I think the only colour I haven't been is yellow. Um, uh, yeah, but it might be nice to sort of have something a bit natural, but maybe just put like a few coloury bits through it. Or yeah. maybe have like an underside that's like a brighter colour and dark on top or something I don't know I've got quite thick hair maybe you've got gorgeous luscious maybe I should bleach my hair and go a crazy colour you you could but it already looks beautiful you don't need to do anything to your hair so I did (laughs) I did a zombie uh, like a zombie run oh yeah in Bristol so that's um, where you're running away from zombies yeah so there are people and it's like a scavenger hunt and you've got to get to checkpoints uh, and then get to the kind of the home base safe with, and, and zombies are chasing you mm. um, and it's quite surreal because it happens on the streets of Bristol and they had a, a shopping centre like an old disused shopping centre oh that would be the dream that, that there were zombies like, like at the that. top of escalators and stuff so it was very much like kind of uh, Day of the Dead Dawn of the Dead Excuse the shopping centre is Dawn of the Dead Dawn of the Dead kind of vibe apologise uh, but get your zombie facts right Chris and then round different bits of Bristol and but it is quite a surreal experience because, like, there are, it's just in Bristol. Other people are going on with their lives. Yeah. So, and you're not allowed to kind of, they, they kind of there are rules that you can't kind of try and include them or kind of try and scare yeah, people. Yeah, leave people or kind alone of, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, just kind of, they're doing their thing. Don't try and scare them with all this talk of zombies and whatever, what have you. But it can kind of spin you out a bit because you can just be running and running away from zombies and you 
and I've come through an alley and you break into an open space and you're panting and kind of going, all right, I, th I think we've lost them. I think I think they've gone for a bit. All right. And then some little old lady with a dog goes back down the alley. You've just been, no! oh, I can't say anything. And then you're like, oh yeah, the zombies aren't going to do anything to her. But yeah, you're, no. you're into the spirit of it by then. Like, and um, there was some a zombie uh, kind of there were some zombies that were just sort of women dressed like a for a night out, mm. and they were kind of staggering about. And we just genuinely came across it, and we thought it was just some drunk women on a night out. Right. <laughs> and then you get close, and it's like, no, they're oh. zombies. Oh, oh right. And, uh, at one point, we were like under a bridge, and there were zombies at like at the top of the bridge. And it's like, if we go that way, they're going to come and get us. And if we go that way, they're going to come and get us. What do we do? Right, we're trapped. And then these two guys, um, let's call them gentlemen of the road, came along, and uh, like swinging their ciders, um, and it was like they saw what was happening, and it was like they went, and they weren't a part of it. No. But it's like they went, oh, zombie apocalypse. In Brazil, not on our watch, and chase the zombies <laughs> off up the road, oh, and we you... made good our escape. Nice. Um, and I don't know what happened to those zombies, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, we left them for dead. But they were Ironically, dead. Ironically, yeah. Um, so um... not on us. But yeah, uh, I apologise for the accent, by the way. I'm uh, it's Brazil. Not, not one of my strong suits, uh, but. But yeah, so that was a good, fun zombie based Yeah, time. I would love to do one, but I just can't do the running around, unfortunately. Mm. So, like, a strategic, sort of more enclosed based one that you're like in and around a building would be fun, but like a whole city, I can't do that. It was both fun and stressful at the same time. I'd quite like um, to organise one. I, like, you need to have quite a big budget just for the amount of extras that you need but oh well, that'd be fun i'd quite like to be a zombie in it mm. one time but the trouble with that is you actually need to spare the time to kind of turn up and um you know practice and rehearse and, and do all yeah the training. you're not just rocking up on the day you are actually it is take does take quite a lot of organization uh, i think but yeah they are great like stuff like that would be fantastic and i mean um, who knows when we can do that with you know you can't have people Oh, I, I, I'm now two metres away from you and I'm not allowed any closer because of social distancing, but it's two metres, so you have to accept that I've technically got zombie you. tagged I've got you, you, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, like, yeah, well, that's a thing, isn't it? Like, you can't really plan anything right now. Uh, you stopped can, us can't... trying. No, we have. Well, that's actually why at the start of um, uh, the start of today, when I got distracted talking about fridge deliveries, because I am so exciting. Um, the reason I was going to be quite pleased with ourselves and a bit smug um, was we sort of sat down and had our first wedding chat today, and actually sort mm. of, other than very vague sort of, like we actually sort of went, okay, well, what what would we like and where would we like it and how would we like it and who would we have in the party and all of that sort of stuff um None just as you're a, coming do, 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 well it just depends, on, depends on who you, know. you are some no, of no. you probably are coming no no let's not <laughs> well anyone who watches the blog is not allowed to come to the wedding that no, seems not. very ungrateful <laughs> i'm just <laughs> just don't want people getting cocky right okay uh well we decided but like i was quite pleased actually because we sort of if you, if you like and subscribe no, let's not promise that either. Then you're going to a prize draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but I thought, sort of think like we did quite well. And yeah, look at you, just just uh, having fun with it. And he, he was very good. Don't have fun with it. Um, I sort of I, I anticipated that I was going to be sort of saying what I thought and him going yeah or no. Uh, but actually, we we sort of racked off quite a few big decisions i think today like considering it was our first chat because it was only i only really anticipated it being a like starting off chat of kind of what sort of weddings would you like um but actually music i'm going down the aisle to mm -hmm. sorted mm -hmm. first dance sorted themes for the tables sorted some ideas for favors on the tables sorted um well, sort of we know what not sorted, what theme but... we're gonna go for with them probably um bridal party and well the wedding party sorted mm -hmm. i think um uh yeah so actually racked oh color scheme also sorted we've done well 
Um, so I, yeah, I think like I was anticipating all of those decisions to be venue? more difficult. No, because I well, venue is potentially sorted. sorted. Um, as we much both... as anything can be right now, and yes. if we can make it happen, oh my god! Yeah, we both agreed on a venue we would like. Uh, um, I, yeah, we would love, um, but it's—I don't want to say too much about that because actually, if we... it does fall through, I'm going to be gutted. Yeah, nothing's in um, stone. And nothing's in stone. I mean, that's true of, sort of everything, I guess, at the moment. But uh, but yeah, it's not in stone, but. It would be nice. and We it's... got a provisional yes from them. Um, we haven't got a date because that would be... Uh, nobody can set dates for anything I, right is now. Is it fair to say it's a, a venue that hasn't normally done a lot of weddings? Yeah. So, uh, and it's a, it's a venue we both like, so it isn't like any sort of compromise on no. our part. But it does mean that after all this is over, presumably there's going to be a lot of people who had weddings planned... That are we'll rescheduling them, reschedule and they'll be re-book. filling all of the gaps that are yeah, existing. Presum- presumably, gaps. have like first dibs and be first in the yeah. queue. Yeah, so um, I'm imagining anyone who's new to wedding planning is going to have very slim pickings for anywhere that is like a bog standard wedding venue. Um, I think obviously, with some places, you might have a bit more flexibility. Places that are like multi purpose venues that do weddings but also do other stuff and actually are maybe just hotels and restaurants some of the time and that kind of thing. But like your your bog standard, like we do weddings type places, I think uh, bookings will be thin on the ground for a long time. And we don't really want to have like a really long engagement. I don't, like, you know, like some people sort of get engaged and then don't even think about planning the wedding. I was just like, no, let's, let's sort of planet less sort of but maybe that's just because it's something quite nice to sort of focus on at the moment mm. to sort of make like have chats about that kind of thing and it's something positive because yeah and it's all a bit uh, mad at the moment and, and yeah. we started applying for credit cards and we need to pay for it all <laughs> we haven't if my mum watches this and has a panic attack no that's not what we're doing um we're, but yeah. we don't know what budget we've got at yeah, all yeah we don't know so, we don't know how we're paying for so it we yet. might be applying might for be credit applying cards, cards. <laughs> um, um yeah mm. Selling organs uh, yeah. on the black market. I don't, I don't you don't need both mine. your kidneys. I, I do. The amount I drink, I definitely need my kidneys. Um, nobody would want my kidneys anyway. Uh, nobody would want any of my organs. I want your kidneys. <laughs> what are you going to do with them? Keep them in your body. <laughs> Thanks. For safekeeping. Oh, well, I sell them to you, and I've got to keep them for safekeeping, but that won't work because, yeah, you haven't got any money. Uh, <laughs> Neither have so I. anyone want to sponsor me to buy Ellie's kidneys? <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, uh, so we can't really set dates and we can't really make firm plans, but we can have in principle ideas and in principle plans and ideal sort of, if we can do it, this would be great and that kind of thing. And I think like largely we were on the same page with most of it. You know how we thought like the country Iceland had sponsored some penguins Yeah. and it turned out to be the supermarket. Yeah. What if we thought like the country Turkey had sponsored our wedding right and it turned out to just be like some turkeys how would some turkeys sponsor our wedding club together (laughs) how would some turkeys club together right why would some turkeys sponsor our wedding one of them manages a hedge fund (laughs) and then the other one is in charge of distributing the profits you've taken this to a strange place I'm quite tired. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I just um, think it would be nice. He's been doing quite well all day, but maybe the realisation <laughs> that he's got to get up. Thank you. Very kind. <laughs> You're doing quite well all day, Well, no, I mean with the like wedding plans. I thought I'd lo- I thought you'd glaze over quite early, but actually you were quite enthused. Yeah. Um, I, one of the I, things, though, uh, he said that I thought was quite funny and he's quite telling uh, was that um, he thought like sort of the, the stereotype would be that the grooms wouldn't be that interested uh, but actually that he would have really loved to go to lots of wedding fairs, but obviously they're all not happening at the moment. Mm. Uh, but then I was like, oh, that's okay. Well, when they're open, we can go to some wedding fairs. The reason you wanted to go to wedding fairs, though, wasn't so much because you were really excited to plan a wedding, though, was it? Uh, free samples. I want to try cake and, and catering and little... I bet they hand out free drinks, don't they? And, and you can have all the different desserts and... Canapes so and no, stuff. Oh, God, I've got to try some canapes, mate. I love a canapé. Did you? Yeah, I love a canapé. I quite like a canapé. Little actually. food that people just hand around to you and you go, oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, I, I like love a bit of canapé. Yeah. yeah. you got to have some canapes at a wedding. Yeah. I think you have to have them before the ceremony, even maybe. So yeah, canapes, maybe like. Um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't have drinks before the ceremony. I wouldn't have canapes yes. before the ceremony. You know. Well, maybe like as they're coming out of the ceremony. Yeah, post ceremony when people while people are having prepared. photos taken. Yeah, and that the last thing like yeah. you want drinks and canapes for milling pe- people. Yes. Because yeah, the actual the bride and groom are basically busy for a while with all of the different combinations of photos, um, but everybody else is kind of milling about. You want to have a bit of music, some canapes. Um, I think that's the and, worst and thing you can do. And drinks. Worst thing you do at a wedding is make people hungry. I don't keep think that's people, the worst thing you can do at a wedding. Keep people waiting to. What's the worst thing? Shoot someone. That would yeah, be but worse. If you shoot someone, that's very bad for one person. But if Stand up in the hungry, middle of the ceremony when they say, Does anybody here know yeah. of a reason why these two should not be wet? Standing up at that point and saying, Yes, I'm pregnant with the groom's. Uh, and it's the grooms. That would Again, be quite that's bad. That's going to affect some of the people. That's going to ruin the Hung, wedding. Hunger affects everyone. But if somebody and did that, the yeah. wedding, I imagine, would be called off quite quickly, and then you can go home and eat before you've had a chance to get hungry. There you go. Or maybe like they just. I feel like you'd go. Sorry, guys, wedding's off. But look, it's all paid for and catered. Have have the food. Why not? Uh, I I that's well what I'd to be do. honest. If I found out a woman was pregnant with your baby. I'd be like, guys, it's obviously very upsetting for me. Uh, but you but guys have at it. Look, it's all paid for, this food. Um, you know, it's not going to... I can't freeze it all. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we're going to have extra freezer space, but we're not going to have a whole wedding's worth of food extra freezer space. And I no. dare say we'd have other things to worry about. But, um, yeah, I guess, actually, if a wedding gets called off on the day, like somebody gets cold feet and doesn't turn up, I like, yeah, if you didn't turn up and I got there and you weren't there... Oh, I'd be cross. That's but what happens. I'm having the food. In I'm, pe- a- I'm drinking the booze. I'm having the food. In peak show. All of your family are no longer welcome. <laughs> hey, that seems rude. What have they done? I don't know, but I probably wouldn't want to be making small talk with your family if you didn't turn up at your own wedding. In peep show, <laughs> I remember now in peep show, uh, Mark pulls out of his wedding to Sophie, doesn't he? Spoilers. And then uh, they then divide all the meals between them. <laughs> and they're just living off wedding meals <laughs> yeah, for the next few weeks oh. if I'm re- remembering quite correctly I don't, I, I don't recall I have seen it but many moons ago I, I sort of worked my way through it once but I haven't sort of rewatched. but um, yeah I don't know let's not make plans for what happens if one of us doesn't turn up though shall we no I, um, I didn't even bring that up I, all I said was you don't want to make people hungry and then you started positive well you just scenarios. said the worst thing you could do is make people hungry at a yeah. wedding like well, for the, the I don't know thing... the person like officiating to like grope me that would be worse than some people being a bit peckish yeah but w- that wouldn't be our fault well i didn't say it would be our fault you didn't then, say it like the worst thing you can do that's your fault at a wedding. as a bride and groom when you're right. planning a wedding right and you're considering <laughs> the worst thing is to make people hungry yeah like because if someone interrupts and says oi you know he's having we a couldn't baby, plan for that, that we can't plan fault. for that no well maybe you should not make anyone pregnant just in case spoil sport i know um, <laughs> i really am <laughs> <laughs> We've not really talked about any politics again today. We what about this? I, I, what about this petition that's been going oh, well, on? Oh well, this isn't a big story, but actually it is sort of politics, but it is funny, um, which is what we need right now. Um, yeah, at some point we're probably going to go back to being like grumpy curmudgeons, but mm. for now I think we're both in quite good moods and we're just talking about whimsical stuff. Uh, but yeah, this was a petition that was going around which I actually really liked. Um, we've mentioned a few times that uh, essentially uh, it. It kind of seems to be the consensus amongst the Western world that New Zealand have handled the coronavirus crisis very well. Uh, they they are led by, um, I don't know if it's president or prime minister, I think prime minister, but I'm not sure what they're called in New Zealand. I think it's prime minister. But Jacinda Ardern is the prime minister. I've sort of at a distance thought she was pretty cool for a long time. There's been a few times that stories have come out about her that she seems really cool. For one... Uh, she was, uh, I can't remember, like, basically leading a debate in Parliament while breastfeeding, which I just thought, she was like, well, I'm in work, but I'm breastfeeding, so normalising breastfeeding is brilliant, also kind of showing people that you can be career, you can be literally the most powerful career person in the country and still have a baby and still do all of that, pretty cool, she's like, she's socialist, she's done some brilliant things, when coronavirus hit, um, she and all of the members of parliament all took a pay cut to draw in line with furlough wages and loads of cool stuff like that. But the handling of the coronavirus was particularly good. Um, and they basically got, have got to the stage where 
they had no active cases. They have actually since uh, declaring that they had no active cases of coronavirus in the country. Uh, two Brits went there and were tested positive. And, but because they've already got all the stuff in place for test and trace, it was sort of spotted very quickly. People were quarantined, everybody was traced and they've still got it in hand. Um, so they're handling it like a boss. So because of this, uh, and I think particularly with the left wing types, because she's socialist, um, uh, I think most people have sort of been looking wistfully at, at another government going, oh, I wish we lived there. Um, but yes, yeah, so this petition is doing the rounds. Um, I don't, I should have probably checked how many uh, signatures it's up to at this stage. It's not been done through, unfortunately, the gov.uk official petitions website, which Jacob Rees-Mogg says uh, they won't take into account any petitions that are not done through official sources. But who gives a shit what Jacob Rees-Mogg thinks? Um, but anyway, it's doing the rounds. Uh, the petition is for us to immediately, like, to, for us to declare war on New Zealand and immediately surrender so that New Zealand takes charge of us. And you know what? I'm okay with this. It Let's do it. I'm not really one for declaring war, but if it's got the caveat of essentially can we just give ourselves to new zealand and just go please can a grown-up look after us now please it might be our best hope <laughs> just cinder <laughs> and you're our only hope uh because this is gone horribly Help us, Jacinda, you're our only yeah hope. it's just like I, we will have to talk about this tomorrow because it is probably the biggest sort of cock-up story of the current like fuck it, it, there's so many of them um but the main one that's kicking off today, which I won't go into detail with, but the big hope for how we were going to manage to get out of lockdown and all of the promises were going to be that we're going to have a world beating test and trace app, which is going to allow us to sort of nip any outbreaks in the bud, which means that we can relax lockdown and everybody can go about their business as normal because we'll be so on top of wherever it's kicking off. That. Well, the, the app was supposed to launch mid-May and then it was 1st of June and then it was like, oh no, we're going to do track and trace, but we're going to do it with like people in call centres. The app will be coming later this year. Then it'll be expected in August. Uh, then it was expected in autumn. Then it was saying winter. And now they've said, we're not going to do this app because it doesn't work. So we're going to have to buy in one that's made as a uh, collaborative effort between Google and Apple. I because that the, one's world beating. Yeah. Uh, well, it is the one that basically most other countries are using. Well, we're going to beat uh, the world if we use exactly. the same one. It's bullshit. bullshit um, yeah. But essentially, they fuck that royally. Uh, and, Meanwhile, um, it's not stopped it's, them from kind of starting to ease things and it's like well they're, e they're you know. still easing lockdown we're still like having hunt like we're, de we're having death like we did uh on monday have a death rate of 35 i think it was 35 or 32 um but as we've sort of said a few times which is the lowest uh it has been at all since before we uh initiated lockdown measures but there's a lag in reporting over weekends. So Monday and Tuesday data tends to be skewed. So the, it's better to do it by the seven day rolling average than take daily stats into account, really. But they were sort of making a song and dance about the fact that it was oh, uh, Matt Hancock. Uh, he said in the tweet uh, down to only 35. And a lot of people are like, there's still 35 people dead. Like only 35 is not great. Um, but yeah, they're back up to 130 odd today. I find it bizarre um, that we're in lockdown in the middle of a global pandemic, mm -hmm. and yet they're going well. But obviously, people are still going to need their weekends. Yeah. Like I'm not saying like people should have to work every day or be overstretched. No, but you but just think spread like the staff spread the overtime out to doing these like, things. Who's spread the people doing the, the reporting? As well. You'd think we'd need the most up to date data on things like that, so that would continue to be reported as efficiently on weekends as it would in the day. But I don't know what the bureaucracy is on that and why there are delays, but essentially that's what it is. So actually a Monday's death figures is not really the one to sort of shout about because you know it's not really accurate. Uh, tomorrow is the day that the Welsh uh, First Minister is going to announce what lockdown measures are going to be eased in uh, Wales. 
the suspicion based on because they seem to leak things to the press beforehand is that it's going to be that non-essential shops going to open there may be some other tweaks to the number of households that can meet or they might tweak the five mile travel rule um but we don't know until tomorrow so we'll be able to report on that tomorrow evening um but yes we're still sort of basically supposed to be staying home as much as we can yes in wales it's, a, it's still stay what home about in england is it are they supposed to oh uh, they're supposed to be staying a lot yeah, uh, and they can travel however far they want uh, to exercise. They, uh, they're still they're still supposed to essentially only travel for work or exercise, but they've said you can travel as far as you like, and, no and you can go outside for any purpose. If you're no outdoors, it's fine. Have open. Yeah. So you can go outside to go to a shop, or yeah. you're at the shop, you'll no, be inside. No, like, leisure know. businesses are open, or they have relaxed things like zoos and theme parks, I think, are coming to be open. And rowing. Uh, well, outdoor, I think they've sort of said outdoor activities, activities are okay as long as you can socially distance. So sports, mm. bit of a mixed bag, but okay. things like canoeing, if you're in a canoe with somebody you live in a household with, that's fine. Presumably um, you can't go and do, like, I did a, went on a stag do once and I did Zorb football. Hmm. What is Zorb football? So, you know Zorbing? No. So it's, it's when you're in like a big... Oh, the big Rubber, inflatable, inflatable ball. right, right, yeah. And you see people doing it on the rivers, and they're just like paddling like a hamster in a ball. Yeah. And Zorb football isn't quite like that because you just your legs are still free, um, but you've got like a ball that's sort of like around the rest of you. Right. So you're running around, and then you can like bounce into so people. So like you're like a big bumper and, car kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, you yeah. can knock people over. And... Yeah, and it can, and you don't really get hurt if you get knocked over, but it can really take the wind out of you. Yeah. But anyway, so. That, I don't know, because you're kind of in a bubble, but you're still probably getting within two metres of each other. I, I don't imagine that's allowed. But actual football is back now. Yeah. I sp- but I suppose that's like a private company. They, I think, thing. like, I haven't put a too much uh, research into it because I don't care, basically. Yeah. Uh, but I think there are very strict regimens of testing in place. So I think regular or weekly checks and um of anyone involved well, and i think they've, they've been quite strict on making sure that's safe and any football games that happen are going to be sort of empty stadium type malarkey so it's not going to have crowds gathering i tell you what we should wrap up and we'll talk yeah, more we about that we'll, talk, we'll come back to that tomorrow but yeah news on tomorrow's uh, announcement from the senate uh and uh what's going on in wales and Oh, we'll be gloating about our fridge freezer, I imagine. Oh, the exciting Ooh. times. Oh, 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 um, suit you, sir. <laughs> oh, suit you. Um, what's that? Why do you do that in sort of an Australian accent? Suit you, sir. Was like, I? yeah, you're doing a weird suit you, sir. Yeah, weird one. Uh, anyway, uh, suit well... you, mate. <laughs> All right, right. Put, put another suit on the Barbie. <laughs> Right, okay, we're off. Oh, he needs you. some sleep. He's got to be up in the morning. Oh, God, I do. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going to go straight to sleep now. Anyway. Yeah, i got to write I've a bit. You don't have to be up so early. No, I don't. I'm not going to get up early. Screw you. So I might, I'm afraid I might leave you to it. Okay. Do you want to mm. say goodbye first? No. All right, well, uh, like and subscribe, guys. Uh, no shame in it whatsoever. Give it a go. You might like it. <laughs>